Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ, the Paraset Radio, Paraset Spy Radio. Lovely book here by the RSGB. Invaluable, actually, if you're going to build a replica radio, you need that. I've also downloaded from the internet various things like that. Probably can't see that too well. It's a sort of wiring diagram and a layout diagram. Um, so far, I've been mounting the bits and pieces there. There's a close-up picture of the, the chassis, both the top and the bottom. It's been quite a bit of work adding all the bits and pieces. And of course, there's a lot of wiring to be done as well. There's also coil winding to be done. I've got here some various shellac covered copper wire, various sizes that I found. So this kit of parts, well, it's not a kit of parts as such. Uh, there's a photo of all, well, some of the parts, there's not all the bits there. There's a photo of some of the bits and pieces in the kit. Well, I call it a kit. What it was, a friend of mine has been collecting bits and pieces over the years to build this radio. He's finally just about got all the bits and pieces, but uh, due to personal circumstances, he now can't do it, which is a shame. And I'm very pleased with the headphones, which I've got here. These are very nice. There's one thing about the headphones. I'll show you those in a sec. One thing about the headphones, because this radio is very basic, it's, it's lightweight, compact, that's why it's so small, easy to use because the, the agents, the operators operating these, yes, they could send and receive Morse code, but they weren't radio engineers as such. So the thing needed to be basic. You switch it on, you know, you could do a couple of tuning up bits and then you send and receive Morse code. So it's not got things like a volume control. The volume control, what you do if it's too loud, move the headphones forward a bit so they're not right over your ears. If it's not loud enough, adjust the headphones so they are right over your ears. Great idea. What a simple volume control. You, you couldn't want anything easier, could you really? The uh, original, these are new and boxed. Look at that, SG Brown high impedance headphones. Look at that, they're brand new. He's put a jack plug on there. So I'm really pleased with the whole setup. Sorry if it's a bit bright now, the sun's come out, which is a nice change, but it's very bright. On one of my trips to Bletchley Park up in Milton Keynes, you know, the Enigma place. If you have not heard of that, look it up online, Bletchley Park, Milton Keynes. Alan Turing was there and all the Enigma stuff, you know, what was it they call the bomb, the bombs with all the dials going round. An amazing place if ever you're near Milton Keynes, have a look. So I didn't know about these Paraset radios till I went to Bletchley and there's a photo of the Bletchley Park radios. Uh, one of them's got a bit of paper over, which is a shame. I think the notice has fallen down over it. But that is the Paraset, the original Paraset spy radio. I knew from the 60s that there were suitcase spy radios, but I never really looked into it. So uh, it's only when this kit came along, I thought, hang on a minute, you know, let's have a look. Is this something I can put together? Well, so far, so good. I've put things together. As I say, the coil, one of the coils is already wound. Someone's wound one of them. I've got the formers and the bits and pieces, but I'm going to redo that. I'm not happy with that. Some of it overlaps and it's coming off the former. But uh, yeah, I'd never heard of this Paraset before. So I'm learning as I go along, really. On one website, I saw a chap, he said, the people using these in, in um, France or wherever they were, he said they were contacting Bletchley Park because at the park they had huge aerials and powerful transmitters. No, Bletchley Park didn't. When I was there talking to the RSGB people, I said, where's all the aerials? No, he said, we didn't have aerials here during the war. He said, can you imagine a load of aerials, right? enemy aircraft coming over oh look we'll bomb that whatever it is we'll bomb it he said there were no powerful transmitters or aerials there at all i think there were some receivers the hro receiver there that one so i've got to build also came in the kit some wood <laughs> i've got to build the wooden box unfortunately the base of the box and the, the top which will be the lid 
is this. And look, this is this is no good. It's too thin. But I have got some plywood. So there's a little Morse key built in there. There's a few pictures of the bits and pieces. Little Morse key built in there because it's Morse code only. Also with the bits and pieces came a second chassis or plate. Now this one, what the chap had sprayed this and put the letters on the writing on, he'd done that. That's why I'm doing this one first. He'd actually started to assemble the valve bases and things. But the power socket here, the supply socket, is a round hole. Apparently that's for a, what was it, a brush socket, a brush connector, whatever that is. I don't know. I've never heard of a brush socket. This one has the rectangular hole, which I've got the parts. I've got the plug and socket, the Jones plug and socket. I will be building this one. Not that I've got all the bits, of course, for this one. But uh, I've got to countersink the holes. I've got the paint. So that's all ready to go. But I've got a, a lot of parts to collect for that. But I just don't want this to go to waste. It's a shame it's there. It's all drilled. It's ready to go. I don't want it to go to waste. So, yeah, this is the one I'm going to do first. Not sure how I'm going to mount the coils. I've got the formers. They, they go in there and there in those gaps. But uh, it's coming on nicely. Looking forward to making some... I've got even nuts and bolts nuts bolts washers solder tags countersunk brass and everything it must have taken him a long time he did i think it took him several years to collect all the parts i've got a, a biscuit tin there we are a biscuit tin full of bits there's a coil former there's another coil former also crystals now this is rather unfortunate with the crystals but everyone getting in a mess here i've got valves the crystals, unfortunately, one is 500 kcs, 500 kilohertz, where the ships used to be and the Coast Guard station sent in CW. So I can't even talk to the ships <laughs> anyway, because they're not there anymore. This one is unfortunate. This is the 80 meter one, but 32025. Well, that's not 80 meters, 3.2 megs, is it? I suppose I could pirate there. What am I saying? Then I've got two of these, 7010, two 40 meter crystals, 7010. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. That's, oh, that's the 500 kc one, kilohertz. Pots and things. Oh, that reminds me, the pot. Let me just show you the pots. Hang on a minute. The regen pot there has got a very short shaft on it. I don't think it's been sawn off. That's just the way it came. Now the knobs, I've had to order grub screws because I can't find my box of grub screws and the three little knobs I haven't got them. They've been stolen. Uh, so that knob won't quite fit on there because the, the tuning plate's in the way. So I've ordered a pot with a longer shaft. It's all these little bits and pieces like that that are taking time. For example, the grub screws. You know, I don't have grub screws. So they're, what are they, 6BA? They're on the way, which is good. This took quite a bit of assembling, this tuning dial. There's a close-up picture of that from sort of sideways. It's all got to line up properly. And uh, that, that wasn't easy. I had to put spacers in there. And of course, as the tuning dial is now higher than it uh, probably should be, that knob there won't go on the shaft. So it's all bits and pieces like that. Uh, yeah, the wrong crystal and stuff, so I can't go on 80 metres. I can go on 3.2 megs if anyone wants a CW contact there. No, no, no. Valves, all the metal type valves. The reason, obviously, for that, the American Star record uh, metal valves, uh, 6v6, is because the glass ones will be delicate. You're out in the field, you're transmitting, you're receiving, you've got to pack the thing away. There are clips. Because when you, when I've eventually built the box, when you shut the lid, you've got to take the valves out, which is a bit of a pain for people out in the field, but otherwise the box is going to be that much bigger. So you take the valves out and clip them in the lid. I've even got the Terry clips in here. It's, uh, I really have just got just about everything that you need. Talking of the reaction control, which that is, it's a, a little bit of a fiddle. It's very simple circuit but it does have its downfall. It's a bit of a knack. 
to get this operating correctly. What you do is you turn the, the regen up or the reaction, you turn it up until you hear a prop in the headphones or increased hiss on the receiver. That's the critical point, it's known as a critical point. I must clear up in here in a minute. Um, so what happens is with a, a regen type receiver, if you then back it off slightly, that's when the thing starts oscillating. You hear that click or more hiss in the headphones, starts oscillating. What happens is that oscillator is like a mini transmitter. It radiates RF. And what the German RDF, the radio direction finding vans did, the people drove around, RDF area on the top, they're turning it around to get your compass bearing. They could detect, they could pick up the receiver oscillator. Now this is not when you're transmitting. And apparently a lot of agents lost their lives because they were simply listening. The reason they went over to a metal box rather than the wooden box, this other one would be, where's my plate? You know that one, this will be a metal box version, that one. They went over to a metal box to screen the whole thing and it would really cut down the, the radiated RF from the receiver when it's oscillating. So. It, You've got maximum sensitivity when you're just either side of that critical point. So you, you wanted to back off slightly rather than have the thing oscillating too much. You're using it incorrectly. So that was the reason they went over to a metal box from the wooden box. I rather like the look of the wooden box. I've got, obviously when I've built this, I've got all the stain and Dutch, or was it Dutch oil and stuff? I'm not going to varnish it because that looks cheap and nasty use Dutch oil and then I've got the finishing polish and all that. I'm no carpenter so that's going to be a bit of fun. The chap I got this from also built this 12 volt power supply, a couple of power transistors there. Originally it would have been a vibrator pack to supply the HT and uh, the LT of course but um, He's used a couple of transistors here instead of a vibrator, which is better. I'm hoping that when this is all done, he's got the built-in Morse key there. There we are. I'm hoping to stick all this in the car, drive up the hill and uh, have a few CW contacts. Run it all from 12 volts, a bit of wire aerial chucked over a bush or up a tree somewhere and sit there sending out some CW, which should be fun. As I said, this is extremely compact. The idea being, of course, you want this small as possible. It's got to be taken around in a suitcase, as on the book there, a leather type suitcase. So you want it small, lightweight. You don't want a huge, you know, like some of the military stuff. You don't want a 19 set to lug around and the variometer and the rotary uh, power supply, rotary transformer, rotary converter. You can't lug all that around. The thing is with the suitcase, Obviously, the enemy would know that of these things because uh, what, that, what happens sometimes if they captured one, they would send false information on the little key there, send out false info back to England. The thing is with that, I, I thought that odd actually when I read about that because you've heard of, of the fist. You get to know someone's fist when you're sending Morse, receiving Morse. Someone at the receiving end would have thought, that's not Fred. That's not Fred on the key, I know that. Who's that then? I would have thought they'd be suspicious, but I don't know. So also, if you're carrying around a little suitcase like that, surely that's a bit obvious. It's supposed to be a disguise, but people going around with little suitcases, surely they're going to think, hang on, what's in that? What's he doing with that suitcase? Go and have a look. Papers, please. Open a case. Dodgy, very dodgy. It must have been to operate behind enemy lines with one of these must have been i don't know scary obviously scary you're looking over your shoulder all the time you know am i being df'd the direction finding vans are they near apparently i've read all this online so i don't know how much of it is true it sounds reasonable they were told not to transmit for more than five minutes okay you don't want your receiver oscillating too long on the, you don't want that because they'll df that you don't want to transmit for more than five minutes. So it must have been all pretty, pretty scary, I think. Obviously, if you're operating from a battery pack, then you could be in the woods, chuck a wire up in the trees. You get an aerial wire with it and an earth stake, stuff like that with the, the set 
I've got that, of course. If you're operating in a building, you've got a mains power supply. That's what I'm going to do. I've got the 12 volt one, but I'm going to build a mains power supply, obviously, to run it from here, uh, which will be nice. So, yeah, there's a lot to be getting on with. What I like is I'm getting back into building stuff. Now, in the 60s, the 70s, we all built our own stuff, radio hams, you know, with pirates and the rest of it. We all built transmitters and receivers even. We put stuff together. So getting back into this sort of thing, octal valves, mounting the bits and pieces, wiring things up, it really has, I don't know, it's just taking me back to the good old days where you build everything. You don't go online, buy everything. You know, you built it yourself. You want an ATU back in the 60s, aerial tuning unit. Well, you built one. You didn't go online and buy an MFJ one. <laughs> you built your own. People don't build anymore, which I find is such a shame, really. But there we are. That's progress for you, I suppose. I thought I had some DCC wires. You remember that double cotton cupboard? That's going back a few hundred years. That's what they would have used on this sort of thing. I've only got shellac. I can't. I've got the DCC. I don't know where it is. So this has been a bit of a, an introductory video, really. Um, if you've seen my other videos, for example, the HRO, and I restored that. I think there were eight videos in total. That was a lot of work. Eight videos because that was a wreck when I got it. Someone had been at it, it had been totally wrecked. It's now fully restored and working nicely. So there will be other videos. This is a kind of introductory one just to show you what's going on here, all the bits and pieces. So I hope you found it interesting. If you have any comments, uh, email me ray at g4nsj.co.uk ray at g4nsj.co.uk perhaps you know what that round socket is can you tell me that a brush connector or brush socket i saw a photo of one and it's got two little sort of slots i don't know what plug fits it or what i know nothing about that so if you do know and i'm sure someone knows perhaps you let me know right i think that's it i've got all my notes ticked off i shall see you next time Thanks for watching as always. Bye bye for now.